Welcome to another episode of World of Tanks with Ungani Titan. Uh, once more, we're on Windstorm, a standard battle. I'm in the M41 Walker Bulldog. And I've decided to try and explore the northern side of the map. It is about time that I learned how to play that side of the map in tanks that are, uh, should we say, not suitable for going to the town. And uh, probably not suitable for the central game, at least in the early part of the game. Because you tend to run into heavy tanks and heavy mediums in the center of the map um, and they frequently come with support so it's not an area where you have the cover you can make use of your mobility um, and I you know want to learn about the side of the map anyway so I'm gonna come down just make a quick kind of scouting run see if I spot anything I spot something I uh, go back into the lower ground and then back off to lose the spot and let the teammates catch up as well. Let some people get in front of me and see if they spot anything else. Uh, if anybody shoots at them and then I'll come back and I'll sort of resume my um, journey. Uh, an enemy tank, an enemy light tank is pushed forward into a very, very aggressive position here. And nothing else has been spotted behind them, so I thought it was worthwhile to get up here because I can go around here and I'm more or less in cover. Um, probably not in cover here, but nobody, um, nobody else shot at me, and I wasn't completely alone. So um, it was worth taking him out. It's a much higher tier light tank, uh, much more dangerous, so well worth taking out now. I've gotten off the main corridor and I'm going to sit here for a moment, let six cents go away, so that when I crest the ridge I'm going to be initially invisible until I'm spotted. Now I'm spotted and targeted almost straight away, so, well, nobody else is visible on the enemy side except the E50M. It is probably him. Um, if it was a tank destroyer on the ridges be in front of me, it, there would most likely have been a shot. The E50M probably didn't shoot because he didn't have a clear shot with the, um, because this section is lower, there's a little saddle here, um, so I am lower than the uh, terrain to my right. I snap one off and somebody's putting rounds into the E50M, so he's probably distracted, he's not paying attention to me. I can put a round into him. I was going to go and assist the T57 Heavy further. And then I noticed that on my left there's a heavy tank basically holding up a whole bunch of our tanks. We're forming a nice orderly queue. And this is something you see sometimes in World of Tanks. Um, a particularly powerful and well played tank does a lot of damage to somebody at the corner and the, everybody else just gets afraid to go near him. Um, now I've come around behind him and as soon as I do, everybody wants to come out. The thing is that they did that at the start the risk would have been no different um, because once there was three or four tanks out there he couldn't shoot them all and the action economy would just kill him he, there would be more tanks shooting than the tanks shooting back and the cumulative damage would just uh, take out the E75 before he got uh, more than maybe two three shots off no matter how well played or how much he angled his armor or how much he side scraped now I've messed up here, but I did this in cover, so it's no harm. self riding mechanism was useful and got me back on my feet and I that nameless is well nearly finished. Because we have two light tanks harassing him and we've more heavy tanks coming in behind. We've just spotted an E one hundred though, hold down. Now I'm going to take the opportunity of using my speed just to get past them. Uh, there aren't many enemy tanks left, so I don't think there's too many left in the town. I'm going to take the risk because it would get me behind them if there is nobody here. If there's not, I'm just going to have to bail through the town back towards my own lines. The reason I'm doing this is that the E100 has the opportunity to get everybody to queue as well. Um, he's very strong, he's hull down well armoured with a lot of hit points and um, he could do quite a bit of damage so by being behind him I was hoping to keep him uh, distracted and just add 
to his troubles and to his decision making uh, because I could put rounds through the back of him pretty much every time I can fire unless he starts angling the turret to me as well but he can't angle it for everyone and we take him out people didn't really queue up this time they were more aggressive in their approach however the tanks that were threatening our cap circle never really got to develop that threat because the um, tanks in the center to the north stepped back in time and made a timely uh, response so they're now engaged we're actually capping out and it looks like we'll cap probably before uh, we complete the destruction of the enemy tanks but that is the nature of the game that happens sometimes you uh, you might like to get to shoot all the enemy tanks but you don't always get the option victory cap base enemy or enemy base captured So, 3,000 damage, um, first class mastery, sniper, fire for effect. We got 500 assistant damage, which is uh, a whole lot, but we'll take it all. And it brings us up to number one by experience. Um, the T57 Heavy actually did more damage. Most of our team survived except for Centurion and KV4. Um, KV4 didn't actually get to do any damage at all. So please press like, please subscribe and thank you for watching and I'll catch you again soon.